David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Now, one of the areas that I don't cover that much on my channel is a genre which I will broadly describe as more inexpensive Chinese-made pens. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that genre of pens, but historically it has been an area that uh, hasn't necessarily connected with me personally. But I know that there are lots of folks out there which do care for these types of pens. I came across one recently that caught my eye and thought it would be interesting to check out and discuss with you. It's a pen from a company by the name of Asveen, and the pen I have for you today is the Asveen 169 Vacuum Filler. Uh, what I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the V169, uh, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to Asveen for providing this pen for review. Um, Asveen is a Chinese brand based out of Guangzhou. Um, I have spent almost two months of my life in Guangzhou. Uh, the parts of the city I have spent time around, I've really enjoyed. Um, if you would care to see a bit more about the country, I did do a two-part vlog about my last trip there. I'll put a link to both parts in the notes below if you'd care to check them out. The company says that they've been making OEM pens for over 20 years and decided to branch out to launch their own pen. Now, when it comes to Chinese pen companies, there is a great deal of, uh, we'll say, vagueness between companies. Um, it's a bit of a spider's web when it comes to relationships between brands, brands which have changed names, brands which have been purchased by other companies, and the like. Um, I don't feel a conversation about the corporate structure of these companies will be that interesting, so in the case of this review, I'm going to stick to the pen. And in the case of this pen, it's a pretty interesting one. It arrives in this box. Uh, inside, we have a frosted box, a little frosted plastic case. Um, we have some instructions showing how to use a number of filling systems. And then nestled tightly inside this foam is the pen. This is the Asveen V169. Uh, the distinguishing feature of this pen is the water drop skeleton overlay. Uh, the overlay is made from chrome plated brass and the underlying body is made from acrylic resin. Uh, it's available in several different color options. There is this blue. Then there's blue with a gold overlay. There's a blue gray with the gold overlay. Then you have one in green. There's a transparent version. And then finally, there is the transparent version with the gold overlay. Um, and as you can see here, I do have the blue. Uh, the overlay is interesting. Um, as I mentioned, the company describes it as a water drop skeleton overlay. Um, one thing I appreciate about the design of this overlay is that the pattern uh, does not repeat itself and that each of the cutouts are unique. Um, I feel the underlying blue resin makes for a really nice contrasting color for this particular model. Um, let's take a look at the top of the cap. Um, it is flat with a rounded edge. Then we have the clip. Um, I like the looks of the clip and it's functional, but I will say that on my pen it's a bit crooked. It's just off by a couple of degrees. Um, I've tried to gently kind of bend it back a bit, but it reverted back to its crooked state. Um, if I really wanted to bend it, then maybe I could get it straight, but I didn't want to risk breaking it or damaging the pen before I recorded this review. Um, we'll talk about price here in a bit, but while this is a rather inexpensive pen, it's not one of those, you know, 99 cent pens that you can find on Amazon with free shipping. So having a blatantly out of alignment clip is a little bit disappointing in my opinion. The cap is straight, and at the end it is stamped with the company name. There is then a small piece of the underlying acrylic which is exposed and tapers down slightly to a small step down to the barrel. The barrel is straight, and then at the end we have a metal piston knob, and the end of that knob is flat. The cap twists off with one and a half rotations, and underneath we have a stainless steel nib. The stamping on this nib makes an attempt at resembling a Bach nib, but I don't believe this is an actual Bach nib. Uh, the nib is available in extra fine, fine, medium, and then here's a look at the plastic feed. The section is chrome plated metal. Uh, while I typically don't care for slippery metal sections, I don't find this one to be too bad. It's concave enough to prevent my grip from slipping. 
Uh, the threads are metal, but I don't find them to be sharp or uncomfortable if your grip should rest on them. And then there's a step up to the transition to the remainder of the barrel. The pen feels decent in the hand. It's not light, it has some heft to it, but it's not overly cumbersome. Um, I don't find the edges of the cutouts to be sharp. Um, that can't be said for all of these skeleton type pens that I've reviewed. If they are sharp, it can feel really uncomfortable as it rubs up against the inside of your palm when writing. Um, with this pen, while you can certainly feel the overlay, like I said, it's not sharp. So that's a good thing. The cap does post, but it doesn't post deeply. And on this specific pen, the cap just falls right off. So it's not secure at all. Um, if you have one that does stay on here, I do find that it adds an inordinate amount of length to the pen and significantly back weights it to a point where, for me, it throws off the balance. So this is a pen that I want to use unposted. Um, this is a double reservoir vacuum filler, which is nice. Vacuum fillers are always fun to use. What you do is you unscrew the piston knob here and you insert the nib into the bottled ink of your choosing. Then when you depress the knob, it'll get to the point where you hear a little click and then the ink is sucked up into the barrel. Um, what is meant by a double reservoir system is that when you screw the knob back down, it seals the main ink chamber in the barrel from the section. So when you're using this pen, you will either need to crack that seal in order to keep the ink flowing during longer writing sessions, or when the section runs dry, then you crack it open for a second to let some ink flow back into the section. Um, in order to clean this pen, the section does unscrew, uh, which is nice. There is a little O-ring to help ensure a tight seal, uh, and it makes it really easy to clean. The Asveen V169 is available through Amazon. Uh, there's also a couple of Etsy shops that might carry it, but I'll put a link to the Amazon site in the notes below. The price for this pen is $40. Uh, is this the best pen you can buy for $40? You know, I would say no, but is it decent? Sure. Um, if you already have some of the more popular pens in this price range, like the Lamy Safari or the Quebeco Skyline Sport, then it might be worth picking one up to round out your collection a bit. Um, I wasn't expecting perfection at this price point for this pen, but it met or exceeded most of my expectations. So for that, it should be complimented. Other than the crooked clip, that part deserves no compliments. Um, overall, it has an interesting look and style, and as you'll see in the writing sample, the nib performs nicely as well. Okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Asveen V169. I want to give you another close-up look at that overlay. It's interesting. Um, in regard to some other overlay pens, here it is with a Le Bon skeleton, and this is the rainbow version of that. Uh, and then here's a, another Le Bon skeleton, and this is the gunmetal version. Uh, and then here is a pen BBS 266. And in regard to some other pens, here it is with a Pilot Metropolitan. Here it is with a Caveco Skyline Sport. And then here it is with a Lamy Safari. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, um, here it is with the Pen BBS 266. And then here it is with the Le Bon Skeleton Rainbow. And here it is with the Lamy Safari. Let's go ahead and ink this pen up. And the ink that I'm using here today is Fountain Pen Revolution's Royal Flush Blue, which is a really nice blue that you'll see here in a second. But like I had mentioned before, in order to fill up this pen, you just extend the knob. You can see the piston knob going on inside there and insert it in here. It helps to tip it slightly. And then you can see here that we get a fill. And it's, you know, this was a decent fill, maybe about three quarters of the way there. Um, there's little tips and tricks in order to get a fuller fill, or sometimes if you do it a second time, it might get a, a bit of a fuller fill, but three quarters of the way is decent to begin with. So here we go with the writing sample for the Asveen 
V169. And this is a medium stainless steel nib. And as I said earlier, the ink that I'm using here today is Fountain Pen Revolution. And this is a Royal Flush Blue. This is what the ink looks like. It's a nice vibrant blue. It has a decent amount of shading to it. Uh, here it is in comparison to Leonardo blue, uh, as well as Farney's American blue, which is a little bit darker and more saturated. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Um, I'd say that this pen is fairly smooth. This nib is fairly smooth. Um, for a stainless steel nib, I don't feel that it has a ton of drag. You're not going to get a lot of line variation out of here. Uh, the ink flow for this medium nib is very nice. I feel that it's fairly wet. In regard to reverse writing, it's very smooth. You get a nice extra, extra fine line. And then in regard to some fast writing. There's no issue with the feed keeping up. So there we have the Asveen V169. Um, as I mentioned, you know, is this the best pen you can buy for $40? No, I think there's a lot of other options out there on the marketplace, but if you're looking to round out your collection, uh, then this is definitely something that is interesting to look at and you can get a skeleton pen uh, that is decent quality. It does have uh, some faults. It's not necessarily perfect, but for the price, it's not too bad. Okay, until next time, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.